What's good with YouTube? You already know, Big Flacco with a comic perspective. And I'm going to smash, dash, slide on through with a whole lot of energy, man. So please hit the like, subscribe, comment, and do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future fire content. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, this is the Mexican Mafia. Picture is part two. But I'm going to include some Mexican Mafia associates or some individuals that were believed to be members but were technically not. And... You know, I'll use a prime example. For instance, my vecino, uh, Walter Gomez, shotgun from 18th Street. His padrino was uh, Jackal. At that time, Jackal didn't have the support, but he had bestowed basically status upon shotgun. So shotgun believed he was in the middle, but technically his status was not legit and it wasn't authentic. You now, so there's a lot of individuals that I may say, okay, they're a member and associate. Based upon me not knowing the inner workings of the Mexican Mafia, like I said before, I know a lot about the Mexican Mafia, but I know absolutely nothing at the same time. And I think you guys understand where I'm coming from on that. So any errors, potentially, in this video, I apologize, man. I did the best of my ability, man, but I hope. I know you guys are going to enjoy some of these pictures, man, because some of them are one of a kind. With that said, let's get to it. This one right here is Joe Morgan on his deathbed when he was in Cork and Shoe. Like they say, you come to this life full of spirit, you go out sometimes just taking your last breath. Rest in peace to a legend. A legend, man. Like I said, regardless of how you may feel about him, the man is was a legend in his time. Even though people like Peg, they were like, you know, terrors in their time, man. Hope they found some peace in the closing days. Now look who we have here. None other than Raymond Chavo Perez. Chavo goes back to the days of getting off with people like, you know, Death Row Joe, um, Woodsy from Bakersfield, and other cats, man. Kind of interesting that there was a lot of primary cats that were from Bakersfield back then. Bakersfield had three inmates that I know of, uh, Rich Reese, uh, Cheyenne, and Chavo. They had two NF that I know of as well, Chalo, right, and then Woodsy. Apparently, there was one more primo of both Cheyenne and Chalo that was also NF from Bakersfield. Anyways, Ch Chavo was a fucking vicious and metal man. He died in 2019. Next individual is well known, Robert Hinojos. I think I pronounced his name right for Brownside, also known as Dopey. I'm not going to speak on the situation, but his status may be that of now an MA member. He was allegedly the shooter and killing former MA member Chino. Next individual, Robert Reese, also known as Chino or Peanut Butter Man from Madalia. He was in Mexico for a long time with Evo, man, as well as he had a working relationship with Mula, as well as Fox. Here you go, Michael Lerma, Big Mike from Pomona 12th Street. He's from the same hood as Tarzan, man. And believe it or not, he has some connections to some people from up north, believe it or not. As far as some family members, there goes Silent George from Logan Heights, man. So you already know he's from Diego, man. Another OG, another old timer from way back in the days. And look who we have here. This is Alfie Sosa before he passed away. You know, every, anybody knows about Alfie, man. Alfie was a straight fucking killer for the mob, you know, for the Mexican mafia. Straight in the middle to the day he died. You know, shit, he died at, at an old age, man. A lot of complications when he passed away. It was a picture of Tony Rodriguez Jr., man. He was running the Coachella Valley, right? It was working with uh, San Bernardino County, I believe, right? And working along with Orange County for a minute. And got sentenced to the feds for a week back in 2007. There goes David Smilon Garlado from the Hazard Gang right there in Boyle Heights. But he was also right there in Ramona Gardens, man, putting in a lot of work out there, man. Especially when uh, a lot of those dudes were working with, you know, people on the American Me set. He was one of the ones that was out there taking care of business. There goes another picture of Frank Pancho Villa, Martinez, man. Little cycle, 18th Street, man. Got indicted back in 2001, man. That right there is Big D, man. Big D is an excellent story, man. I did a little uh, video about him. He went from, you know, being one of the hardest MA members, one of the best boxers in the system, to a Christian, man. And he left his life, man, on, like I said, man, feeling great about the changes he had made in life. Excellent story. There goes William Vincent Acosta from Orange County, man. His case is a 19-year-old man. Shit. 
it gained a lot of notoriety, man, because it was a big case out there in Orange County, man. He was only 19 years old. Here goes an old picture of Gilbert Reese, also known as Little Mo from White Fence. Little Mo was, I believe, the second Mexican Mafia member to ever come out of White Fence right after Gilroy. There goes Negro from, I believe, Artesia, right? And um, if you don't know him, man, he was found dead in a homeless encampment, I believe, in Long Beach a couple years back. He was also fucking, had some issues, man, um, when he disrespected a, a Another old-time MMA member named Roop Soto. In fact, he actually slapped and raised a hand to Roop Soto, which pretty much put him on the odds with the MMA at that point. There goes a picture of George Jokes Bravo from La Puente. He got caught up on a case in 2007, man. That was kind of a high-powered case. That was interesting. There goes Chuco Castro, man. As you guys already know, another name that's not really popular in circles nowadays based upon his actions later on in life as an MA member. There you have a picture. It's not too good, man, but that's a Robot Salas, right? Robot Salas from, from Hazard, who was really one of the main, main persons that was involved in this shoe war. Basically, he's the one that ended up with those boots. Some of the more important stabbings and hits at that time, man, are contributed to him. You know, the shoe war alone, man, was a big issue, man. Not the best picture of Robot Salas. Next, as you guys can see, man, we had Chewy, man. Chewy was engaged in a street battle for territory, man, that, as well as um, standings, and he ended up becoming victorious, right? As we already know the whole situation, he ended up catching a long, fiddle case. There goes a the picture of Maldito, who's from Verdugo, who was part of all those hits that went down, like, in the early 2000s, right? When they were basically cleaning up shop against those gang members that were going against what the inmate was planning to put out there at that time. Here goes a picture of Daniel Guate Grajeda. As everybody knows, the Grajedas are a big family like the Morenos as well when it comes to the Mexican Mafia. Here goes a picture of Chino Frank Madriaga, who basically ran all his operations with the crew out there in TJ and was working with a lot of the cartels on behalf of the Mexican Mafia. Chino, you know, was kind of like a, had a lot of influence over there at working and de dealings with uh, Bat Marquez as well. There goes Colorado Red, an old timer, right? Who was from back in the days during like Mundo's time, right? Right there. It's Tupi Hernandez, who at one time wanted to take over basically as the Mexican Mafia godfather. He was trying to proclaim himself when Joe Pele Morgan passed away that he was now going to be basically the godfather of the Mexican Mafia. There was a picture of Richie, Rich Buchanan. There was an individual, Nico, who was a Mexican Mafia member, um, had a strong affiliations and associations with the Aryan Brotherhood. In this picture, these are a bunch of MS-13 members, but if you look down with the guy that white shirt with his hands crossed, that is none other than Mula an MS-13 member who had a lot of influence and input with the Mexican Mafia. There goes the old school picture of Kilroy before he passed away. Um, Kilroy from, is from White Fence. Now, besides Kilroy, you had, um, there goes a picture of Kilroy when he was younger. It was totally different, you know what I mean? Here comes uh, Popeye from San Diego. David Barron, if you don't know about him, he had a lot of ties across the border, had a strong relations with the cartels over there. Now, there. Here goes some brothers that ran San Diego for a long time, which was Ronnie and Hector Ayala. You know what I'm saying? They go back to when Bobo was out there. Um, as we already know, the murders that they committed landed them on death row. As they've been on death row for a long time. And they still have a lot of influence out there in the streets of San Diego and are pretty much legends out there for the Mexican Mafia. And here goes some old school pictures. Look who that is. That's a young Peter Ojeda Sana from Orange County. Way back in the days. The next picture you're going to see is of none other than uh, Champ Renoso right there. A young Champ. As you guys already know, I think Champ, Peg Leg, Kilroy, and a few others, man, had the biggest influence in the early years. Changed later on, though. 
So this was part two of the Mexican Mafia pictures, man. I'm going to do a part three, man. There's still a lot of members I have not touched on, man. So we're going to get to that later on. With that said, I hope you guys have a positive, productive day. It's Big Flacco from a convict's perspective. I'm gone.